And if you bought my album and you came down here expecting me to do a lot of routines from the record and I didn't do them, well, excuse me! Hi and welcome to Real Reviews, where today I'm diving back into documentaries and looking at the new Steve Martin film, which is due to hit Apple TV very, very soon. Directed by Oscar winner Morgan Neville, who is best known for 20 Feet from Stardom, as well as The Best of Enemies, which is a, a documentary on the conversations between Gore Vidal and William F. Buckley. Um, this is a really deep dive into Steve Martin, the man, the myth, the movie maker. Uh, and obviously the stand-up comedy legend. It is simply called Steve exclamation mark brackets Martin a documentary in two pieces. So let's dive into both bits and find out exactly what people have got to look forward to when it hits the streaming platform later this month. This guy was getting people so happy. I always thought this just does not happen and it did. He's the most idolized comedian ever. He reinvented stand-up. It was a cultural phenomenon. Good evening and welcome. My name is Steve Martin. Steve Martin. I am a So for people who aren't up to speed on Steve Martin and exactly what he represents in modern culture, pop culture, or, or, or comedic, comedically in the landscape, um, he's not simply the guy in the Arconia from Only, Only Murders in the Building, uh, which he created and co-created co and wrote, by the way, with Selena Gomez and Martin Short. Um, he is He was an alternative comic before the idea of alternative comedy in the SNL Saturday Night Live um, sense of the word came about. Um, he wasn't like George Carlin or Lenny Bruce in terms of being controversial or political, even though he came up through comedy at a very political time uh, with, with the Vietnam War and, and, and the, the sort of the, the fallout from that and the civil rights movement and so on and so forth. Um, Steve Martin took a, a different approach. He played, he played the fool, um, but it was a very calculated uh, uh, and, and very precise and detailed approach to being a slapstick full sort of like um, on stage buffoon, as it were. Uh, he had an arrow um, through his head. He played the banjo. He had a white suit. Um, he really uh, didn't really do appear to do much at all and yet people embrace this this idiocy this this lovable um, uh, slapstick comedian on stage who didn't really do jokes didn't really have an act um, and and his entire ethos is based in philosophy based in logic based in reason and and and, and coming up with comedy from that perspective um, he filled out arenas he filled out stadiums at one point he was out selling Fleetwood Mac in the 70s, which means he was selling out to 45, 50,000 people in one night. Uh, the guy's a legend. He moved from the cinema, he moved from comedy into cinema with the jerk, and then the jerk to the, to the man with two brains. Um, he did Pennies from Heaven. He did Roxanne. Um, he did LA Story. He's done um, uh, Bowfinger with Eddie Murphy as well. Um, and the Three Amigos, which people will remember him for most prominently, and Planes, Trains and Automobiles with John Candy. He really, he has a career and a CV which is just massive, um, but he's a very private, very introverted, very um, calculating in terms of um, his persona, uh, and he, it's just very, very um, introverted, which seems odd. Um, but what this documentary does is it really does open uh, open up um, for people who are interested in Steve Martin, really opens the doors on a lot of things. Um, and the first half is his rise up through the ranks and his move from comedy into film. And then the second part takes that on at full force. So I'm going to jump into the next segment and we're going to do that. I always thought of him as the door out of the 60s. You could be silly again. All comedy was political, and I felt that it was time to change that. Steve Martin has just taken the big leap onto the big screen. I was launched into the stratosphere. I was scared out of my mind. You better pull yourself together. You've got a big movie offer. 
Being able to witness an artist reinvent himself is quite extraordinary. And the people who like it are wise and intelligent people, and the people who don't like it Real are ignorant scum. Right. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yeah, we'll see you. So at uh, an hour and 30 minutes per part, this is a, quite a mammoth documentary. You're looking at a good solid three hours of, of diving into uh, exactly what it is that makes this man tick. Um, what comes through most prominently for me is a, is a guy who, who really loves this, uh, who loves comedy, who loves performing. Um, he obviously, not obviously, but over the course of the documentary, you learn that he has come from quite a, a damaged background in terms of uh, his family life and, and emotionally, he, he was quite detached uh, and didn't didn't get that sort of cathartic um, thing which you would expect um, th that happens within every family. That, that simply didn't exist for him. Um, so he found solace, he found um, value uh, and an emotional connection in other things, so he was he looking at um, it, it was it was magic tricks. It was it was comedians. It was it was a ga gaining validity and, and sort of a, a gaining that that sort of acceptance uh, through the audience, through his comedy, um, and, and and sort of trying to find a way into it from there. Um, and and he's just a very softly spoken, very uh, genuinely very funny guy. Uh, so you get moments with Martin Short where they're, they're they're doing back and forth, and you know the the comedy is very natural, it's very organic, and and, it, and it's genuinely very funny. You've got uh, moments with Jerry Seinfeld, who's a big fan. You've got moments with Eric Idle, and and then you have former, you have other sort of less sort of industry-based um, connections coming through like family members and, and, and his wife and, and so on and so forth. And you really get a very well-rounded idea of, of exactly who the man is at, you know, 70, 75, 76. Um, and we're into season four of only four, uh, only uh, murders in the building. I was going to say only fours and horses. Um, so again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to dive into the last bit. I'm going to give the rating and then we're going to move right along. Let's do that. There is a longing at the center of everybody he shows us. Glad you're not filming this because it'd be so embarrassing. Hmm? Why don't I interview you as we're driving? It's called Viking, but sure. <laughs> my whole life is backwards. How did I go from riddled with anxiety in my 30s to 75 and really happy? How did this happen? Don't you have a score of servants take your laundry over? Actually, I'm just doing this for camera. It's the first time in 27 years. <laughs> Right, so for me, this I'm in hog heaven here because if you're a big fan of it, it's like any documentary. You, you, if you love the documentary subject, if you love the person who they're doing a film on, uh, in this case for me, Steve Martin, it's it's really great because he he represents so much uh, that I feel is important to me personally in film. Uh, he's, he's a great writer, uh, you know. He's a raconteur. Um, he's he's mastered so many crafts and he plays a damn good banjo. Let's be brutally honest. Um, and, and he's just generally very interesting. So, you know, alongside the other documentaries on the Apple TV platform, including Michael J. Fox one, which is called Still, and Sydney Potio, which is the, called Sydney, I believe. Um, it's, it's a really solid uh, selection of documentaries, in this case, um, from production company A24. Um, so I'm gonna give it four out of five on the big old five scale. That's a four out of five on the big old five scale. And I'm gonna, in, I'm gonna implore people who uh, are fans of his to track it down, find it, and dive right in. Right, I'm gonna move on to that trailer. Let's do that next. Right, and so it is that you've reached the end of the video review for Steve exclamation mark brackets Martin, a documentary in two pieces. So this is a bit where I go. If you've liked the video, then give me a thumbs up. Failing that, you can always just drop a comment in the comment box and I will respond. And then finally, you can always just subscribe so that every Tuesday and every Saturday when I drop another one of these videos, you can pop in and watch or listen to as much or as little as you like and then go about your day. In the meantime, check out the rest of the channel and pop over to the Patreon page. Talk soon.